You may be eating pre-digested food, and it turns out we're all eating more of it than we think we are. Ultra-processed foods. They're often cheap and convenient, and Americans, of course, eat a lot of them. Because here's the thing, ultra-processed food isn't just junk food. It's showing up places you wouldn't expect. It has taken over the grocery store. And I think we all already know that it's unhealthy, addictive, and more. Eating too many ultra-processed foods could shorten your lifespan. Raises the risk of diabetes. Heart disease fatty liver disease, and depression. They can cause harm similar to smoking. Eating them too often could be taking years off your life. But this article breaks down one of the hidden reasons that ultra-processed food is leading to all these issues. And it's not just calories or sugar or a lack of fiber. Quote, according to emerging science, it may be due to manufacturing processes that pre-digest raw food ingredients. We are eating pre-digested food. The idea of eating pre-digested food is just so viscerally awful. Basically the opposite of farm to table. But you know what? I love reading about how evil the food industry is because it just gives me so much drive and motivation to say, F ultra processed food. Knowing they're making bank, tricking us all into eating something that's terrible for us just gives you that little extra fuel to be like, no, I'm not going to touch any of my old favorite UPFs. Not you corn pops, not you pizza pockets, not you ramen. Not you box chicken nuggets. And I'm sure many of you are the same. Like I just cannot stand being tricked into doing something I know is bad for me. Like it's just like, no. And hopefully today's video will give you that same vibe. By the way, my behavior change course, How to Change is launching in March. If you want to learn the skill of change, break bad habits and improve your relationship with yourself, this course was made for you. Click the link below for more information and get on the pre-launch list. As a thank you, anyone who signs up for the pre-launch list will receive a huge discount at the time that the program comes out. So first, what is ultra processed food anyway? Well, it may seem obvious when I say it, it comes down to the processing. What does pre-digested mean? To manufacture cheap, delicious food that is packaged for convenience, basic food crops such as corn, wheat, and potatoes are dissembled into their molecular parts. Think about that, breaking foods down to their molecules that's where the ultra comes from in ultra processed. And it's this extreme level of food processing, so extreme that these foods are pre-digested, that creates this entire category of food. It's not that it's junk food. It's not that it's pre-packaged. It's not that it's really high in sugar or calories. The defining feature of ultra processed food is that you could not make it at home if you wanted to. It's only possible for these foods to exist because of modern food science. To explain the point in a more tangible way, let's think about the difference between an apple and an apple pie, but from McDonald's. Researchers split food into four groups depending on their level of processing. One, unprocessed or minimally processed foods. Two, processed culinary ingredients three processed foods, and four ultra processed foods. So one, unprocessed or minimally processed foods. This group is pretty self-explanatory. Apples belong to group one. These are your whole foods with nothing added. This level includes all fresh, dry, and frozen fruits and vegetables, grains, meat, eggs, milk, fish, nuts, and seeds. Group two refers to processed culinary ingredients such as salt, sugar, butter, honey, olive oil, or spices. Now group three refers to processed foods. The term processing just means that a food has undergone a change from its natural state. This level includes canned food, cured meats, wine, cheese, fresh bread. To use our apple example, applesauce, canned apples, or prepackaged apples preserved with lemon juice. So in group three, we usually have a food product that's made up of almost all just real food. It can be baked or boiled or preserved or canned or fermented or mixed with other foods. So it's important to note that processing itself is not bad. It's when you take things too far. And group four, ultra processed food is the definition of too far. So here is the definition given for group four. Ultra processed foods are formulations of ingredients, mostly of exclusive industrial use, typically created by a series of industrial techniques and processes. <laughs> so instead of food, it's industrial ingredients that have been created through a series of industrial techniques. See what I'm saying? This is the problem. There's just not a lot of normal ass food in ultra processed food. And group four is where we find our McDonald's apple pie. See, a homemade apple pie is only a level three food because yeah, it's got sugar and fat and whatever else, but it's really just a combination of regular old processed ingredients you can find in any normal home or grocery store. A McDonald's apple pie, on the other hand, is a group four ultra processed food because it's made up of a ton of industrial ingredients created by a series of industrial techniques. And if we take a closer look, 
look at the ingredients of the apple pie, many of them are quite industrial sounding, which clues us into the fact that they must have been created through processes similar to pre-digesting, as mentioned in our article. Basic food crops such as corn, wheat, and potatoes are dissembled into their molecular parts, starchy flours, protein isolates, fats, and oils, or what manufacturers call slurries. The bulk of what is extracted is starch slurry, a milky mixture of starch and water. But we've also extracted proteins and fibers, according to a video explanation of the process from Start Europe. Roughly half of the starch slurry goes to produce starch-based sugars and other derivatives. Those are created by hydrolysis, a process similar to human digestion. Next, with the help of artificial colorings, flavorings, and glue-like emulsifiers, those slurries are then heated, pounded, shaped, or extruded into any food a manufacturer can dream up. So food manufacturers rip real foods apart down to the molecule, turn them into slurries of starches and sugars and whatever else, then combine these slurries and powders with oils and emulsifiers, and from there they could remodel them to seem exactly like the normal foods we know and love. Take potato chips, for example. When they were invented, they were just really thin slices of potatoes that were fried and then served. If you have an air fryer, you could easily make potato chips at home with just three ingredients, a potato, oil, and salt. But let's compare that to a Pringle. A plain Pringle contains dry potatoes, vegetable oil, corn flour, corn starch, rice flour, sugars, maltodextrin, mono and diglycerides, salt, citric acid, and wheat starch. I actually thought that was gonna be way worse than that, but this is a plain Pringle, so none of the seasoning is on it. But let's investigate further. So to start, dried potatoes are likely not just whole ground potatoes, but an incredibly fine potato flake that's extracted in a similar process to what the article has been discussing. Then we have vegetable oil, which have you ever wondered exactly what vegetables go into vegetable oil? The packaging on this one shows tomatoes, celery, carrots, and spinach. But I was curious what exactly qualified as vegetable oil, so I looked up the USDA definition of it. So here are the requirements. It says that vegetable oil refers to any refined, bleached, filtered, and deodorized oil, and can consist of any one or a combination of the following canola, corn, cottonseed, olive, safflower, soybean, sesame, and sunflower. Yeah, let's name a product vegetable oil and put vegetables on the container that contains little to no actual vegetables. And refining, bleaching, and deodorizing definitely all qualify as industrial processes. Moving on, next we have corn flour, corn starch, rice flour, sugars, maltodextrin, and wheat starch. So at least three of these are these pre-digested slurries we just learned about. So they turn those things into a paste and then to bind them all together, they add in the mono and diglycerides, which are a type of oil emulsifier, which is again created through a sort of pre-digestion hydrolysis process as well. Stick everything together and shape it up into a perfectly stackable potato, corn, rice, sugar, wheat, chip, and the end result is something that technically has components of real food, but is nothing like any real food you've ever seen. And again, the insane thing here is a potato chip really only needs three ingredients. But somehow with ultra processing, something so simple is turned into a Franken food with the sole purpose of maximizing profits. And see with the Pringle, it's junk food, right? So you're not exactly expecting it to win a prize for the most wholesome ingredients. But the problem with ultra processed food is they are everything now. Much like the regurgitated food mother birds feed their babies in the nest, ultra processed food is quick and easy to digest, according to experts, but that's not how the human digestive system was meant to work. When food moves through the digestive system in ways mother nature didn't intend, the body loses the ability to send a signal of fullness to the brain, said Dr. David Katz, a specialist in preventative and lifestyle medicine. Your body is expecting to have to break down the nutrients in the food. So when this process is already partially completed, it's no wonder that people are so hungry. It's no wonder that people are overeating. It's no wonder that the obesity rate has been skyrocketing since at least the 80s, around the time that ultra processed food entered the food supply in an unprecedented way. And it's not just that this food is making us hungry, it's that this food is making us crave. It's so thin, crispy, and cheesy, and I just want to keep eating it. 
an idiot. Because when something is digested quickly, it's not just hitting your body quickly, it's hitting your brain quickly as well. And in the world of addiction, there is this important concept of rate of delivery. The faster the drug hits your brain, the higher you get, and the more addictive the substance is. Add in just the right ratio of sugar, salt, and fat designed to tickle our taste buds and an ultra-processed food that's nearly irresistible is born, said Dr. Chris Van Tulikin, author of Ultra Processed People. It could be a pizza if you put some cheese and tomato on top. It could be a burger bun. It could be a grain bar, a breakfast cereal, an ice cream, or confectionery. They all have the same list of basic starting ingredients, he said. It's an illusion of food. It's much cheaper for food companies to destroy real foods, turn them into molecules, and then reassemble those to make anything they want. And that is the problem right there. We are all eating edible food-like products. These foods are products first and foremost. The only thing that they're designed to nourish is a healthy profit margin. And you see, the real problem isn't that ultra-processed foods like Pringles exist at all. The problem is, what happens when the entire grocery store is made up of foods that barely qualify as food. And most people have no idea that this is true. Most people have no idea that they are being tricked. Like some sort of virus, the ultra processed food category has grown to take over the entire grocery store. Foods that you'd never expect to be ultra processed junk food products are. You know, it's one thing if people were knowingly buying junk food, right? It's another thing to be purchasing a yogurt cup for your kids that promises you that it's wholesome only for it to be nutritionally comparable to an ice cream cone. And not an ice cream cone made of cream and sugar, but an ice cream cone made of modified milk ingredients, gums, and emulsifiers. Apparently, this ice cream is so fake that they can't even call it ice cream. It's called a frozen dessert instead. Nearly every food product we consume now is designed to be unsatisfying. Let's think about the grocery store. Obviously we have our junk food, our honey buns and Debbie cakes and Cheetos and candy and whatever else. But then we also have most breads and not just Wonder Bread. These are all ultra processed too. Nearly all cereals, including probably 98% of the healthy cereals, most frozen dinners, yes, including most of the healthy semen ones. Nearly every and any food directly marketed to children, any non-dairy milk, most plant-based foods, and like 95% of everything in the health and diet food aisle including protein bars. Estimates say 73% of the food supply in the United States is made up of ultra processed foods. Eating ultra processed food is the norm for us now. And we're still in the really early stages of figuring out exactly what that's doing to us. 20 healthy volunteers were locked away from the outside world for one month. For two weeks, they ate only ultra processed foods. For the remaining two weeks, they ate a diet made up of minimally processed foods. Each diet contained the exact same quantity of calories, sugars, fiber, fat, salt, and carbohydrates. The only difference was that one diet consisted only of foods that were ultra processed. In two weeks, participants on the ultra processed diet gained an average of two pounds, 0.9 kilograms. On the minimally processed diet, they lost the equivalent amount of weight. Now, obviously two pounds in two weeks is nothing crazy, but think about what that might do to you over the weeks or months or years of just consuming the normal diet that most people consume in society. This is the norm. On top of that, what makes the study so interesting is that these diets were matched for composition. So the participants eating the ultra processed food were eating the same amount of protein, calories, sugars, etc. as the group eating the minimally processed fresh meals. And yet the ultra processed food group were still hungrier. They were still eating more calories. Science is really starting to reveal that it's not the lack of fiber. It's not additional sugar. It's the ultra processed foods themselves that are the problem. There's something seriously strange about the way our bodies are processing these ultra processed foods. They seem to be dysregulating the checks and balances our bodies have to keep us from gaining excessive amounts of weight. And this is just the tip of the iceberg because it's not just about weight, it's about overall health and metabolic health and more. It's funny, as you scroll down through this article, all the related links to other ultra-processed food articles are so bad. Study finds growing evidence of link between ultra-processed food and cancer. Artificially sweetened ultra-processed foods linked to depression in women, study finds. Ultra-processed foods now account for two-thirds of calories in the diets of children and teens. By fracking food much like we frack oil, we have fully deconstructed the food matrix, and this is associated with many times higher risk of chronic disease and early mortality, and a degradation 
degradation of global health. Before the Second World War, before we began using these new manufacturing processes, we never observed such a high level of chronic disease worldwide. So the question is, which degree of processing remains compatible with human food system sustainability and global health? At this point, it's becoming extremely hard to ignore how broken our food system is. And that's probably a good thing because things need to change and they need to change now. The only reason that these foods are being broken down and broken down so aggressively is because it's highly profitable. When you cook something yourself normally using fresh ingredients, the quality of those ingredients really kind of has a major impact on the final flavor of the dish. It makes or breaks it essentially. And if you had food companies competing over the quality of their ingredients, they wouldn't make any money. You want a delicious tomato sauce, you can sell the most pizza. Well, then you've got to let the tomato ripen on the vine a little longer. You have to care for the soil and fortify it. You have to spend a little money on fresh herbs. Got to care about the quality of the olive oil in the sauce. All of these steps, they take time and they take money and competing on quality is not the game these guys are trying to play. They'd much rather squeeze every last drop out of the cheapest tomato they can find and then just inject a bland tomato paste with tomato and herb flavor and MSG and sugar. So your brain still enjoys the final product, but you just can't put your finger on why. But that fast rate of delivery and all the other modifications they make to the sensory properties of the food to tickle your dopamine receptors stop you from ever realizing that these foods actually taste just as disappointing as you'd expect them to. Well, most of them. Anyway, some of them, they did do a good job. Let's be real. <laughs> I find knowing this stuff really does fuel the desire to just keep getting healthier and healthier and healthier. So I hope it had the same effect on you. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.